So, welcome back. Time for vector displacement we're baking with make bake, world vector displacement in this case. There's some weird stuff going on here. You can read it if you like. And someone suggested to remove the multi-race modifier. And that's of course not an option. You need a multi-resolution mesh to bake out vector displacement map. It doesn't matter if tangent or world, right? You need a multi-resolution mesh. Otherwise you can't bake it. You can't just have an arbitrary mesh whatever mesh it is, and a cage, and then you want to project this, this won't work, then you don't have undercuts, and that's of course the whole point of vector displacement, right? To have undercuts and to recreate your mesh perfectly fine. Anyway, here's the mesh. Again, no UV layout, right, will be created on the fly. And of course, multi-resolution um, details, right? Like this here. So you can see a lot of stuff comes out and a lot of stuff goes in, and this here also comes out, right? and that's the base mesh. Of course, that, that is too extreme. You should never use something like this, but it's good for demonstration, right? To show really the strengths of world or vector displacement in general. Okay, uh, material set to both. I already set the material, so I don't have to do it. Uh, that means basically displacement and bump mapping this works now. So we want to back out a world vector displacement map and a cavity map. Automatic mode, we want this because we want seamless map. Auto split size is very high to, don't, uh, we don't want UDEM, right? So this will only result in a single tile. And that's the stuff I'm still working on and this will help you with um, projecting meshes onto another mesh, right? You could also use the shrink wrap modifier here. Where is it? Here. But this will work a little better, I hope. Anyway, we don't need this yet. So let's bake it. You can see here what will happen, and you can see here the maps, right? I have to select the mesh, right? It's selected, and let's press bake. You can see it will unwrap the mesh. Map size will be 2120, then it will subdivide the mesh, done, and it will paint the vector space map, and then it will create the map. This time it's called Weirdo World Vector Displacement. Then it will calculate the cavity stuff, and this is called Weirdo Cavity Map, right? <coughs> so here are the maps, let me show you the maps. Let me reload this. So this is the cavity map, looks really cool, actually. <laughs> okay, and the world vector displacement map looks like that. All right, now let's go back to the node editor. And I also created a render mesh, right? This is the or original mesh here, um, hey, weirdo. And this is the created render mesh, weirdo render. And instead of a multi-resolution modifier, now there is a subsef modifier on it, right? Then you need adaptive subdivision. And for meshes like this here, where the topology from the base mesh is completely different than from the high-res mesh, you need extremely dense polygons, like 0.5. This means four quads per pixel, right? So this is not a good idea to do something like that here, but it's good for demonstration. <laughs> so, right, let me render this without displacement, right? As you can see, it's not connected. And see what will happen. And of course it's very smooth, right? And we can see the cavity map. And now let's connect the displacement. You can see cubic, right, non-color. And let's render this. And boom, there's our displaced map mesh. And as you can see, it's seamless. All right, let's copy this. And let's see. Right. Maybe I should move the camera a little bit, just a little bit. No. All right. Let's render this, right? Uh, to know this on, right? <coughs> so, as you can see, it will tessellate very quickly, and now it's already rendering. Of course, I'm going to pause this. So here it is, and as you can see, a lot of details, right? Cavity map and displaced details and seamless. And that's really the power of the ve um, vector displacement, right? But don't do something like that here for a real production or just for your personal image, right? This is just good for demonstration. You should have always a good silhouette from the base mesh, right? Like in this case, something like this here would be much better, right? Anyway, that's it for now. See you in the next video.